Welcome to another episode of Cancer Chats, and I'm very excited because we have our first ever interview. We have Katie Cox from Susan G. Komen that will be joining us today. So let's get into it. And so Katie, could you explain to me exactly what is your role at Susan G. Komen? So at Susan G. Komen, um, my title is Development Manager. So what does that mean? It means lots of things. Um, but I have the opportunity to work very closely on coordinating um, a variety of our third party events and national programs. I work one on one with individual fundraisers, with team fundraisers, and really just doing a lot of awesome, fun things to help raise funds for the mission of Susan G. Komen. All right. I think most people know with Komen, uh, they know the name, they know the color pink, they know the race that happens, but it's more than that, isn't it? It really is. And just kind of um, playing on your words, we've really um, morphed into this more than pink movement. And we've transitioned our race for the cure to an event called more than pink walk. And it is really an effort to help people understand that we're more than an event that we are investing in breakthrough research that we are providing care in our community through things like the 877 go Komen hotline. Um, that we are bringing our community together through a variety of events and in, in a variety of ways. And we are also advocates. Mm -hmm. um, we're advocating for, we're really the voice of over 3.8 million breast cancer survivors and warriors today on Capitol Hill. Um, so we've associated more than pink colors with each of those pillars, um, purple for research, green for care, blue for community, and orange for advocacy to really help people understand that we are more than the color. Don't worry, pink's not going anywhere. Pink really has um, broken down barriers um, all across the board. It brought breast cancer, it helped to bring breast cancer out of the shadows, but there are so many more things than we are than the color. That makes total sense. And, and I've seen that. So locally, let's take a moment. Let's pretend that I had been diagnosed with breast cancer and I came to Komen. What resources could I find there? So if you were to call us locally at 309-691-6906, we probably asked a couple of questions about where you're at in your breast cancer journey so that we can get you to the right, you know, right resources. But some of the things that we provide locally are, um, we have great support resources where survivors can connect face to face. So we have several Facebook groups. If you request, if you are a breast cancer survivor, request to join Komen Cafe. If you are a young breast cancer uh, survivor diagnosed under the age of 40, request to join Central Illinois Young Breast Cancer Survivors. If you're living with metastatic breast cancer, you can request to join Central Illinois Living with Metastatic Breast Cancer. And we have another uh, great group called Circle of Promise that you don't have to request to join, but this is a group where we share in our local Circle of Promise organization, which is the Peoria Minority Health Advisory Council, does a lot of work in our minority community to help educate about breast cancer. So those are just some of the social support resources. The Coleman Cafe group that I mentioned actually is gonna come back together face-to-face -to -face in June, yay. Um, we always meet on the third Thursday from 5.30 to 7 p.m. And we'll meet at our office in the Methodist building. And again, that's for all breast cancer survivors. So that is amazing. Um, if someone is calling us and is looking for financial resources, mm -hmm. we're going to get them connected with our Komen Treatment Assistance Program. And there are um, ways that patients um, can apply for financial resources. Um, but at that same 877-GO-Komen and through the Komen Treatment Assistance Program, you can ha have a lot of other uh, resources right at your fingertips, like social support, psychosocial support, um, information about clinical trials, and basically any kind of important breast health information. Um, there are trained specialists on the other end of the line that can get you connected. Um, and then the last thing is through events that we have in our community. And, you know, we're still kind of figuring some things out for later this year. We do have a few more than pink walks um, on the books, and those will happen. Um, we're just trying to figure out what capacity. Um, but we also bring people face to face, shoulder to shoulder, um, you know, around our community to um, learn more about Komen, to fundraise for things like research and the treatment assistance program. 
And um, sometimes people just want to be in the presence of other people who have walked the same journey as they have. That that's the one that has really struck a chord with me. Now, actually, I really appreciate that you guys are funding research because I like research is probably why I'm alive today. So I very much appreciate that. But this idea of being able to connect with other, um, <clears throat> I know a lot of you guys call each other breast cancer survivors. I prefer the term fighter because for me, it just doesn't feel like it's quite ever at that survivor point being with metastatic. And, and that goes to, you've created these different groups where we have different diagnoses, can connect with people with similar diagnoses at, ne- at least. And from one of the groups that you put together, I got to meet someone in person actually, who's become just a really uh, good friend to text, to talk with, to get to finally have a bite to eat with together. Um, someone that understands what I'm going through. So I appreciate y'all's awareness of the complexity and the differences within breast cancer. It's not just breast cancer. There are so many different stories, so many different types, so many different treatments, and you guys are all aware of those and um, have done a really nice job to create a platform in this area for us to connect. So if you are in central Illinois and you fall into any of those groups that Katie was talking about, I would encourage you to know that there are resources available and use them if you need them or you'd like to be connected with some other people. There are just so many, and you've seen so many great tips and tricks that have been shared. We're certainly, nobody's providing medical advice, but when somebody's having hot flashes, there are some medical resources that can help with that, but there are not medical resources that can help with that. So, you know, I've seen people post, I know I was probably one of them, like horrible hot flashes. How do I cope with this? You know, and learning things like learning what your triggers are. For me, when I was in treatment, Um, it was okay for me to occasionally, you know, have like a little sip of wine here or there. Well, I learned that those two times that I had a sip of wine brought on these massive waves of hot flashes and alcohol was a trigger for me. You know, we, we do have a few rules in place and thank goodness we never really have to enforce them, um, with these groups, but one of the, you know, they're, they're private, um, which is great. So you can share openly and freely and we want people to be honest, but we also, um, keep it a positive space as well. So we can be honest, which isn't always positive, but it's not a place where we're just coming and dumping um, information. And let's just be honest, you know, having a breast cancer diagnosis or living with metastatic breast cancer, being a fighter, um, it's, it's no walk in the park and it is not pleasant and everything is not sunshine and rainbows and unicorns and it doesn't feel positive. So it's not like, You have to say something positive today, but it is also a group where we're just not, we're really doing our best to lift each other up, Mm -hmm. Um, but being honest at the same time. And I I think that a lot of feedback we have heard is that kind of providing that positive safe space has really been what brings and keeps people in our groups. I, I, as, as a member of the groups, I would completely agree with that. Um, so we've discussed kind of Facebook and some local things. Is there, is there something else that Komen is, is doing right now that you would want um, our massive viewers, <laughs> viewership at Cancer Chats to know about? Yeah, you know, I think it's really important to know that while we're focusing on local resources today, um, there are still local resources in our national website, um, mm-hmm. komen.org, and also at the 877-GO-KOMEN hotline, which is 877-465-6636. Um, we, those resources can get you connected with other local resources, but whether you live in the country or three hours outside of a big city or right in the heart of town, you can have access to, you know, just about any resource that you need at the website and um, the phone number as well. And of course, you know, I, I really encourage people to pick up the phone and call us at uh, locally at 309-691-6906. And sometimes we're able to help sift what resources you need. You know, I think sometimes people call us and they're like, I was just diagnosed with breast cancer. And I know Susan G. Komen does breast cancer things. I I don't know what I need, but I know you can help me. But if you aren't on Facebook and are struggling to find the resources you need or want, just give us a call at 691-6906 and we can help out. I know we have really just kind of done like the tip of the iceberg today with what Komen is into and supporting and, and, and just creating for people. But thank you for your time, Katie. I really appreciate you giving um, people a better idea of resources in this area 
And again, I would encourage you to use those when you need them and know they're there.